You and I till the end Don't need to pretend Again and again We'll stick together Welcome to the fourth and final week of the Joanne Stitch Along and I'm your host Mikey. This is the Geometry Lessons Crochet Blanket and in this week we got a lot of activity happening. So when we did the arrows the first time when we looked at our sample that we have you're noticing that your arrows are going in this direction. Arrows two is gonna be in the opposite direction from what we did and it's still the same stitch work to go down. So we still know how to do a waterfall uh, uh, five double crochet. So we're gonna be doing that. After we get that done we're going to be advancing back and you're gonna go back to week number one of the, the video series if you need the video and you're going to be doing the checks all over again. So you're gonna be doing this all over again so we'll be covering that as well and we're also going to be covering the final border. So we're going to get ourselves started and we're gonna start arrows number two. Remember that we have the crochet diagrams ready for you in order to follow. So we're gonna create those spaces. We're gonna fill that in and carry on. So I'm going to be building on to a different sample. In order to go you're just gonna continue to build your afghan on top of what you already have and that's where we're gonna start next. So you grab your same size crochet hook a five millimeter size H and we're going to begin with our week number four next. In week number four we're going to start with our spacing right here. So we've already had the single crochet done from the last week. So we're, we're going to do start at number one and we're gonna be creating these spaces just like we did before. So I don't need to be as slow to sh uh, show you how to do this exactly. What I can just do is just uh, abbre abbreviate it for you because the, in actual fact you know how to do this already. So we're going to start we're gonna create our first part of the do double crochets, chain three, skip three and then just work in sequence all the way to the end and we're gonna be creating this and then waterfall number five will come in on the fifth row to come all the way down on the angle just like we already know. So let's begin the first row. So let's begin row number one. You should be using the color B to do this. So not the main color like we had started before when we did these arrows. So um, I actually just filmed the whole thing realizing that I did my colors backwards so I'm refilming. So what I have here is that B has already been attached here for me but you make sure that you are fastening off and start fresh with the color B. So as you begin number one you are going to chain three and that will count as your double crochet and you will double crochet the next two in a row. So you're going to chain three and you are going to double crochet the next four in a row. So starting in the next one. So let's count those together. So we have one, two, three and four. So we're now going to create those spaces like we used to do it before. So you're gonna chain three and you're going to skip three and you'll double crochet in the next three and you're gonna repeat that same idea going all the way across. So chain three, skip three and double crochet the next three and please repeat that and I'll see you at the end of number one in a moment. As you come all the way across you're just maintaining the pattern as you know it. So skipping three and then you'll double crochet into the final three for row number one. Let's when we're done that let's turn our work and begin number two in a moment. So row number two we're gonna start the lean action that will happen and then it will be very easy to tell. And so you're going to chain three right where you are and you're gonna double crochet these two for sure. And what I need you to do is that I need you to double crochet into the very next stitch. Or this is the chain right? So go right into the chain itself. Don't go into a space so that it will hold it nice and in, into position. You'll chain three. You'll skip those two chain and the next double crochet because that equals three and then you'll double crochet in the next double crochet after it. So one, two, and three includes the chain one space, uh, one of the chains is the first one. And you'll repeat that all the way across. So chain three, skip the next two chain and the double and then start on the next one after that. Please do this across for row number two. As you make your way across you're just gonna be less stitches on the end. There will be one less so there's only gonna be four and make sure that when you see these uh, turning chains you have to make sure you go into the top of the chain never into a space. And let's turn our work and do row number three. 
In row number three we wanna keep the lean going in the same direction so we're gonna keep it going. So you're going to chain three and you'll double crochet in the next two. So we wanna end one double crochet early to keep that lean moving. So chain three, skip that double crochet and the first two chains and come to the third chain and place in a double crochet and then the next two double crochets. You, so you're still keeping your threes uh, aligned with each other. Okay, chain three. Skip the next double crochet and the chain and two of the chains. Go into the third chain and do that one plus the next two stitches in a row. This is row number three and I'll be right back in a moment at the end of the row. At the end of row number three you're just this double crochet and the first two chains you're gonna skip so you come to the third chain and once you do that at the end just fill in the rest of it to be double crochet right to the edge. And don't forget about that turning chain. Okay, so let's turn our work and do row number four. Let's do number four. We're gonna continue the lean one more time because we need to create one more space. So you're gonna chain three and you'll double crochet the remaining double crochets that you can see. And like before, we need to use the first chain to keep that lean moving. So use the first chain for a double crochet and then chain three and start skipping. So one, two, three. So skip the next two chains and the double crochet. Start in the next double crochet after it. So one, two, and three. And then chain three, these two chains and the next. You're gonna skip and then go across and double crochet again. So just maintain what you already know and I'll see you at the end of this row. This is row number four. So I'm coming up closer to the end of number four and we're gonna be changing our color at the end of this back to the main color. So one, two, three, skip two chains and one double crochet and the final two are double crochet each. So let's get rid of this color. We already showed you how to change it in previous videos. So just change it out and then turn your work and we're gonna get ready then for row number five which will be the waterfall straight on down. So in row number five what we're going to do is we're gonna chain up one with the new color and do the single crochets on top of the double crochets that you have and when there's a space we're gonna do the waterfall number five going all the way back down here. So we're gonna be doing that. We've already shown you this waterfall number five now twice in this tutorial series. I'll just demonstrate it once with you but you chances are you already know how to do it at this point hopefully. And you'll wanna switch back to your longer crochet hook in order to make that happen if it's easier for you as well. So let's begin number five. So we're going to begin row number five and switch back to your larger hook. It's easier. And I want you to come in. So when we, we finished we were here so we turned it already and then you're just gonna come into the first one. If you put it onto the hook right, right away, you can go right into the first stitch and this is called a standing single. And if you prefer to join it, then chain one and then single, you can do that as well. It's your call, it's you're the creator after all. So we've already uh, covered on how to do standing single already in this series. So you're just going to come across and then each double crochet in the top is going to get a single crochet. So it's just these chain three spaces that we need to worry about. You may wanna secure that in with a tapestry needle. I just cut it because it's a tutorial but um, you may wanna do that. So we're gonna come down. This is waterfall number five. I've already shown you before on how to do this stitch. So you just have to continue just to do what you know. And this time the angle is different the first time that we're doing it. But it's still the same information. So you're just going down and attaching it to the first stitch. The key as we talked about before is to keep it organized on the back of the hook as you come all the way back to the top. So I find if I rush this stitch, um, I drop loops. But if you just take your time and enjoy the stitch and journey, it's a lot easier. Okay, so you're gonna do that and so you'll do three of those and then you'll do your singles on the tops of these doubles and etc. So please go all the way across for row number five and I'll see you back here in a moment. So I now come all the way across in number five. I can switch my hook back to my ergonomic to make it easier for myself and let's turn our work and do row number six. 
Row number six you're going to chain up one and you are going to apply one single crochet in every stitch across. This helps maintain the balance of the floating waterfalls to be able to space them out perfectly and you'll do this all the way across. So one single crochet in each stitch across. I'll be right back. I'm at the end of number six going right to the edge and then I'm gonna turn my work and we're going to begin row number seven. So seven, eight, nine, and ten are back to making the spaces. You can see the direction of the arrowing that we're gonna go. So we've gotta make sure that the spaces kind of favor the opposite direction when it comes up and if you're maintaining the counts it's fine. Let's begin row number seven. Back to the diagram we go. We're gonna start number seven and the lean is gonna go in the opposite direction this time and we still have our four rows to create the spacing and then what we see here is row number 11 which is going to be the waterfall coming down and then the next row after that will be single crochet. So let's uh, do this section now and starting with row number seven. In row number seven you're going to chain up three, counts as your first double and then you'll double crochet in the next one. So let's start creating our spaces. So chain three, skipping three and then double crochet in the next three. And you're gonna maintain that all the way across just like you've done it before to create these spaces. So chain three, skip three and then go into the fourth one away. Do that one plus two more which gives you three. Do this across for row number seven. I'll be right back. In going all the way across you can actually see where the chevrons are, the arrows are. So when you jump the final one here the remaining six that are left will each be a double crochet at the end of number seven. So let's turn our work and begin row number eight. In row number eight we wanna maintain, we can see the direction of which we need to go into which helps us to see and you're going to chain three and you'll double crochet all of them but the final one here. So we wanna just do the next four in a row. So we have one, two, three, and four. And if you're watching the spaces you don't have to excessively count. So you got that one plus the two chains. So just chain three. So skip that one in the two chains and come right into the third chain itself. Do that one plus the next two double crochets that you have so that the space can move over. Chain three, skip the next one and the next two chains. Double crochet in the third chain away plus the next two double crochet and I need you to do that across for row number eight. Now see at the end of the row. At the end of the eighth row you're just gonna maintain the stitches that you know it and this time you'll have that third chain that you need to go into to keep that spacing moving and then the last two double crochet to go in. Make sure the turning chain at the top has it right into the turning chain itself. Let's turn our work and begin number nine. In number nine we can even see the direction now and so we're gonna continue and you'll chain up three. You'll double crochet in the first two stitches and then you'll add the next chain into that as well so that you can move the spacing over by one. So chain three, skip the next two chain and this double crochet and then come to the fourth stitch away. Okay which is the middle one. So do that one the next one and the next chain one space. And I need you to maintain this over and this is row number nine. So one, two, three, skip two chains, the next double and go to the fourth stitch away. Please do this. I'll see you at the end of this row number nine. I'm maintaining the leaning of the spaces so after I get that last space in I just continue to go all the way to the end and on this row here number nine there will be four double crochets left in the edge. And let's turn our work and do the last spacing that we need before starting the waterfall. Let's begin row number ten. So just chain up three and double crochet in the first two. And we need to create that leaning one more time. So just chain three, skip the first double and the next two chains. Come to the third chain, double crochet in and then do the next two. Chain three, skip the next one and the next two chains. Come into the third one to do that one plus the next two. So do this all the way across for row number ten and I'll be right back in a moment. Coming all the way back across here on row number ten and the last five are just double crochet in maintaining the, the spacing. 
So I need you to get rid of this color and we're only gonna do the next color just for two rows and then we're switching back to the main color. This is what caused me to refill and I kind of misunderstood the instruction because I didn't read it properly. <laughs> Happens to everybody so you know it is what it is. So let's uh, fasten that off. I'd probably use a tapestry needle just to hide in the ends back and forth. It's better for the tutorial reasons. I'm just gonna keep on moving. Let's move on now to row number 11. So let's continue and I am going to start and where I finished off was right here. So I've already turned it to get ready and we're going to be maintaining this. So the tops of these double crochets are all single crochet. So I'm gonna start with a standing single and if you prefer the other way as written then do that. That's fine. And so you're gonna just single crochet in the tops of your doubles and then when there is the chain three space you're going to do your waterfall number five down like you did before. I find when I rush this you see I'm not used to uh, a non-ergonomic hook but it is what it is right? <laughs> so I only use it when I absolutely must. So you're just gonna do your waterfall five going down and you'll attach and then you'll do those three and then you'll singles on the top and it's essentially what you know the difference is is that it's just gonna go down on a different angle but you're just gonna follow the spacing down. So I need you to do this for row number 11 and I'll be right back in a moment. I'm coming all the way across on row number 11 and once I'm over here I'm going to switch my hook back to my ergonomic and then we're going to begin number 12 and then we're going to be ending this color. So we're gonna turn our work and begin number 12. To begin number 12 you're just gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch across and as I mentioned before when we did this, this helps space those waterfall stitches out and we will be changing our color at the end of number 12 and starting with something new. So let's begin to do that and I'll see you at the end of this row in a moment. So I'm coming to the end of number 12 and I wanna eliminate out this color and go back to my main color and we're gonna do that. And let's get that started and fasten off. You can weave in your ends and we are going to start with row number 13 in a moment. Row number 13, 14, 15 and 16 is what we already know. It's the actual large swath of the main color that has been provided. We had another sample like when we did it before. So we're just going to start with the very first one and when we go to start we're just gonna join it and then chain three and then apply one double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So please do this for row number 13 and I'll be right back in a moment. I'm coming close to the end of number 13 and when we get there we're just going to immediately just turn and start row number 14 next. Let's do that. Row number 14 you're just gonna chain up one and just one single crochet into each stitch all the way across and I'll see you at the end of number 14 in a moment. Okay I'm at the end of number 14. Let's turn to work and do 15 and 16 and it's the same as the last two rows. So number, um, what do we have? Number 15 we're going to chain three and you'll just one double crochet in each stitch all the way across and that's just number 15 and I'll see you at the end of the row in a moment. I'm at the end of row number 15 so I'm just gonna turn my work and begin number 16. Let's begin row number 16. You're just gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way, all the way across. I was doing a two together there because I was looking at the instructions. So I'll be single crocheting all the way across and then when we get there we're going to carry on in the tutorial but I'm going to be redirecting you back to video week number one and uh, we're gonna be doing that next. So just single crochet across and then we'll talk about what we're gonna be up to next. Okay so I'm finally here at the end of number 16. So right now I wanna flip in the instruction because now we need to continue to go back to what we already know and we're gonna be starting back on the right side and you're gonna go back to week number one. So let's talk about what we're gonna do and we're gonna move along in the instruction. So here in the instructions it says to proceed to the check pattern as follows and this is back to week number one where we create this. But what we have to do is we have to do one set of instruction first and then we're going to work 
double asterisk to the double asterisk as given for the checks in week number one on page number two. And then repeat the fifth to eleven rows once more then fasten off and then that's it for your particular idea. So what I'm going to do is show you this first row and then you can go back. If you're watching this on YouTube I have a playlist that I've linked in the video description that all of the videos are grouped together so that you can go back and this here when we go to look at this the double asterisk on week number one is currently right here on the second row here. So this is where you would want to go when you go back to that video. You can just fast forward to the second row and complete the instructions as it's stating. So the double asterisk and then where is the double asterisk when it shows it again. We're just looking for that information and we're just continue to look and it's right here at the end of the eleventh and twelfth rows. So it says to do the double asterisk. Remember what it said? It said do the double asterisk uh, as given uh, for week one and then repeat the fifth and two eleventh rows one more time. So you repeat the fifth to the eleventh row one more time and then that's where you're gonna finish. So let me show you the first row here so that you can get started to go back into week number one. So let's get ourselves started on the first row before you go back to the la uh, to the first video. You're going to just chain three and you're gonna double crochet into the next four stitches. You already know what to do. It's just you have to get yourself started in order to do that. And remember that the checkered boxes were made up of spaces of five. So the chain three and this four equals a total of five. <coughs> You're then going to chain five, skip five, one, two, three, four, five, and then you're going to go into the next five after that. And you're gonna do that all the way to the edge. And so what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna expect you to do that and you can get yourself to the other side. I'm just gonna show you the original sample that we did in order to show you how that's going to end on the other side. So all my swatches are a different size. So what we're doing is that we're creating the spacing that you have here and you're just going to repeat it so that you will end up with five double crochets on the very edge on the other side and then therefore on row number two which is right here is where you're going to pick up and you're essentially just create recreating this on the opposite side of the blanket and it's really quite neat. So just get that done all the way across and then turn your work and I'm going to have you go back to video week number one. But what I'm going to do next is that I'm just gonna quickly show you how to do the edging for where you're ready. So you'll have to come back here for the edging on uh, week number four. So I will put that here next. When you're ready for the edging, I'm just gonna use this swatch as an example. You're gonna start in this side here. And you are going to chain up one and you are going to apply one uh, single crochet in each stitch on the top and the bottom because you can easily see it and then you're just gonna evenly space out your single crochets along the edge. You have to keep in mind that the corners are gonna have three single crochets in it so that you can turn it. So you just apply one, two, and three so that corner would be technically done and then you move on here. So you just continue to go. Make sure the right side is facing up and what I want to do is that when I hit the next corner I'm just gonna show you how to equally space and it's just a rough guess and uh, there is no stitch counting that re, uh, that requires you to have a certain amount in order to form a pattern. So equally spacing works out really quite nicely. So let's turn our, our work at the next corner in a second. When you get to the last stitch across just put three into the last one and just turn your work and now you're gonna go equally down. My recommendation is that when you equally space stay within some chain work. If you jump into a major space it creates that space to be completely open. So if you go and just grab the stitch work and you're just gonna equally uh, put it into position. So if the blanket is pulling like this way like into the stitch work itself it means that you're jumping too quickly and it's trying to pull it to match you and if it's starting to ruffle out that means that you're going too slow. So you just have to just maintain it in order to go down. When you get to the bottom you will chain your three or so you'll single crochet your three then work across your bottom and then come up the other side. And 
it should look pretty even. So what I like to do is look at the distance of these stitches here and kind of make it very close to the, the same look on the edges and therefore it should be okay. So go all the way around just equally spacing it on the edges and in each stitch on the upper and the bottom side and I'll be back in a moment. When you get back around you're just gonna equally space coming up the other side. I'm just doing an abbreviated version of this and so that's why some of it's not done. So I'm going to then slip stitch to the first single crochet and that should make the corner look really good. So now we're gonna do something really unique that I've never seen done before and this is round number two and the final round. I'm about to show you a technique that I've never seen done before so let's bear with me and let's try it. So it's cool, learn new things, right? So you're going to chain up one and you are gonna go into the same space that you're currently in and you are going to draw through a loop. It's now saying to rotate the hook towards you. So rotate your hook towards you and back around and then yarning over pulling it through two loops. Huh, that's neat eh? So now you're gonna go into the next one. So going in, pull through and then you're going to rotate it towards you. Just provide a little bit of slack cause it's easier and then yarn over, pull through the two. This is like a reverse single crochet without going in the reverse. So going in, pull through, rotate and pull through. How about time somebody thought of that? <laughs> oh, I love learning stuff thing new. It's awesome. So we're going to do that all the way around and it, that's one into each stitch. It may take getting used to. As you can see it's my first time doing it live on camera because God forbid I actually try to practice uh, before I do this live on camera but it's a, a unique perspective to see me learning in real time, right? You can see the hamster burning out the wheel. <laughs> so you'll do that all the way around and this is awesome and then when you get back to the and here you'll slip stitch to the first one that you did that with. You may wanna just practice that. I can see that I'm very inconsistent. So just pull through and just kind of work it out in your head on how that's gonna work out. And if you really don't enjoy that you can just single crochet around too. It's up to you on how you wanna do that but this is ultimately how this blanket is finished and it's always good to learn new things, right? and I just need a little bit more practice with this and I think it's pretty unique. So um, let's uh, just conclude this video for today and I'm your host Mikey and this has been the Joanne Stitch Along. Really a neat concept. Um, I am sure I'm filming this several weeks in advance but I am sure the work in progress for this has been absolutely spectacular. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm sure I'm gonna be blown away so I'm really quite excited with you. So this has been a presentation for Joanne. I'm your host Mikey of the Crochet Crowd. We hope that you enjoyed all of this. It's been a really unique thing. When I saw this for the first time I'm like what is this and I originally thought it was Grafcan work which I was like oh my. <laughs> and then I realized that I learned something new with the waterfall stitching which really excited me. So I think um, this is going to be trending this kind of concept because use your inspirations is thinking ahead. So I think we'll probably see these waterfall stitches in the future at some point and I think it's an amazing idea. So on behalf of my friends at joanne.com please show our, your creativity on our, our social media using the hashtags of handmade with Joanne as well as the crochet crowd and we'll see you again next time. Bye bye.